Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 48, part B. We're discussing functions of normal random variables. This is part two. In the previous video, we discussed the convolution formula, which is a corollary to the bivariate uh, transformation theorem. We also uh, proved a theorem about the linear combination of normal random variables. And then we did a corollary uh, that talked about x bar. And the x bar, if the mean of the original uh, values or the observations or uh, random variables xi have a mean mu and a variance sigma squared, then the uh, distribution of x bar is normal with a mean mu, the same mean, but the variance is much smaller, sigma squared over n. So in this video, we're going to do some examples, and maybe we'll have some time for uh, this theorem of how to prove the independence between x bar and s. So the result from last time is that if x1 and x2, and this is redundant information, this is really redundant, we just need the x1, x2, up to xn are iid normally uh, distributed with mu and sigma squared as their mean and variance respectively, then the distribution of x bar is given by normal distribution with mean mu variance sigma squared over n. And this tells us that x bar has a higher probability of being in an interval than x does in the same interval because the variance of x is sigma squared and the variance of x bar is sigma squared divided by n, which is always a number that's one or larger, so it makes it smaller. Okay, so let's do an example. Let x1 and x2 be the number of pounds of butterfat produced by two Holstein cows. Now to keep these cows independent, we selected one from one farm and the other um, from another farm, and they were randomly selected. And let's say that we know that the distribution of uh, output of butter fat of both cows is given here, okay? And we're, again, we're assuming that x1 and x2 are independent. So they're not related because they're from different farms, and so we assume that they are independent. Now, sigma squared of 1, uh, sigma of 1, is going to be the square root of 22, 820, and sigma 2 is the square root of 19, 205. We want to define y as the difference between x1 and x2. Now, these are normally distributed, and we actually proved in uh, section 5.2 uh, what the distribution of this is. Um, but we also proved that earlier with the linear combination of normal, independent normal random variables. So this is the linear combination, x1 minus x2. So we take that same linear combination of the means. But instead of uh, subtracting, we add the variances because they're independent. Variance of x1 plus x2 is equal to the variance of, um, or we could say x1 minus x2, sorry, so to be accurate, is the variance of x1 plus the variance of x2. And we've shown that a few times. And so by adding these together, we get this variance and we get this mean. Now, let's find the probability that x1 is larger than x2. So what do we do? We need this in terms of y. So we take x1 minus x2, and when we subtract x2 from both sides, we get x1 minus x2 is greater than 0. And so we can substitute this for y, right? And so this becomes y is greater than 0. So we do our transformations just like we did back in section 3.3. We'll take y minus its mean, which is 61.5, and divided by the square root of its variance. And then we take 0 minus the mean and divided by the square root of the variance. And this leaves us with the probability that z is greater than negative 0.3. And we can actually look uh, phi... of negative 0 0.30 from table 5b, or you could do um, this subtraction here, but our, our table would give us directly 
0.6179. Okay, so that's the probability that x1 is greater than x2. Now, let's say that we have a completely different uh, problem, and so we have um, x1 has a normal distribution with mean 50 and variance 16, and we take a random sample of n equals 64. We want to find first, we want to find the probability that x is between uh, 49 and 51, so x1. And then we want to find that x bar 1 is between 49 and 51. So we want to compare these. And let me clean this up a little bit. So we take, for the first, we take um, 49 and 51 and x1, and we subtract the mean, and the mean here is 50, and we divide by the, vari uh, the standard deviation, which is 4. And so we do that to all three portions of the inequality to keep it the same, to not change it. And we end up with the probability that z is between negative 0.25 and positive 0.25. And so that is the probability z is less than positive 0.25 minus the probability z is less than negative 0.25. And we can look up both of these from our table, table 5a here and 5b here. And this is the answer. 0.1974. Now, let's do the same thing for x bar. But the distribution of x bar has the same mean, but its variance is uh, sigma squared divided by n, and 16 over 64 is 0.25. So we went from a variance of 16 to a variance of a quarter, or a fourth. So we do our transformation here to z, for all three sides, and we end up with the probability that z is between negative 1 over 0.5 and positive 1 over 0.5, or z is between negative 2 and positive 2, which can be broken up as the probability z is less than 2 minus the probability z is less than negative 2. And we can re again read these from directly from our tables 5a and 5b, and we find that that's, this probability is 0.9544. That is such a bigger probability than for just a single value, which was 0.1974. So you can see where by taking a larger uh, sample, we get more precise results. And so um, here we would have say something spread out like this, and here we would have a distribution that's very narrow. Okay, all right. So that's it for this video. Please don't forget to scan and upload your lecture notes by uh, midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. If you need an answer before you can make it to virtual office hours, then please email me, but email me a picture of the problem because I may not have it handy and a picture of your work so far. That way I can uh, better understand how you're approaching the problem and help you uh, faster and more efficiently. Please take care of yourself and we hope to see you next time.